Um, our success as a community is obviously worldwide. You know, I was just in Joomla Day, Denmark, last weekend. I'm here now. I'll be going to Spain next week, and then Milwaukee, Wisconsin in November, where I know it will be cold, but it will be fun. Uh, all around the world, people like uh, Germans and people from Brazil meeting together for a microbrew uh, in San Francisco. It's a really wonderful community. We bring our own cultural identities and experiences to enrich it. So this is Xerox Park. Uh, this is in Palo Alto. A lot of the technology that the world uses today, from the mouse to the operating systems like Mac OS and even Windows, the ability to point and click things on a screen, uh, came from research institutions like this, 1960s, 1970s technology. This is where the new ideas got created. This is a very dark photo. <laughs> of Joomla Day Brazil back in 2009, where you've got 200 excited young people collaborating together once a year in person to think of the next generation of software. Very different from what we saw in the 1960s and the 1970s, where large corporate institutions were the place where new innovative technologies came from. Today, in an open source community like Joomla, we're innovating around the world all the time without huge barriers to entry. So we're also living in a changing world. Not only do we have an open source community that's connected worldwide, but we need to ask ourselves a few questions. What's our role in the world, in the software development community? What can we as folks in the Joomla community do uh, to help out? How can we make sure this world becomes a better place? Uh, these are challenging times, and I would challenge all of us to think beyond just our individual businesses or our individual hobby enjoyments when it comes to Joomla, and say what are the things that we as individuals can contribute to the greater good of society. And then finally, what are the tools that other people need to help promote this idea of a better world? What can we be doing together to hand folks that might not have the money for large proprietary services, or might not have the knowledge to use complex command line interface technology, what can we do to make sure that those people have the tools they need to be successful in helping us make this a better world? So these are the scenes from the Arab Spring, right? This is what we've seen over the course of the last six months. Signs like this. And things like this, and <laughs> Dell computer. <laughs> Dell, I know you're watching Dell. Um, what we're not seeing are huge signs and banners that say, thank you, IBM, or thank you, Oracle databases. They're saying thank you, Twitter, and thank you, Facebook. The world is changing. Revolutions are happening using today's technologies, and those technologies aren't necessarily those from 1960 and 1970 that were built in some big research park. These are things that have been built over time by young and growing businesses and entrepreneurs like yourselves. So my question for you guys is how can we in the Joomla community contribute to this positive change happening? What's, what's our role? What are the things we can do that go beyond just making another template or making another component. So the bigger question then is, when is software more than just ones and zeros and just bits and, and bytes? When is it something more than just the technology? Well, look at the Mongolian government. Mongolia is not necessarily known as a place that is on the leading edge of technology. But when it comes to their web infrastructure and the things that they are building, they're running their entire federal government's websites on Joomla. In fact, this is a map from our friends down in uh, um, South Africa and up here in the, the EU of governments around the world that are using Joomla for their websites. It's pretty powerful. We can, we can help increase transparency. We can help increase openness through government's um, websites. 
What about nonprofit organizations and charities? <clears throat> this group is the Polaris Project. Uh, they're helping to end human slavery and human trafficking around the world. They're using tools like Joomla and mashing it up with other services to help lead in this very noble effort and to help them reach their mission. And what about big corporations? We're, we're lucky enough to have Microsoft continuing to be a strong contributor and supporter of the Joomla community. Companies like eBay have 16,000 employees running an internal social network on their analytics service on the Joomla platform. They have terabytes and terabytes, I think petabytes of data. Um, they're able to exchange reports and to learn new ideas from each other using Joomla. So what I see happening is over the course of time, three main things are changing in our Joomla world and the technology world. Uh, first, things are becoming more social. This is Facebook. This is the Joomla Facebook page. You all should like it and, and go to it and see the resources there. It's, wow, this is dark, sorry. This is the world, by the way, at night. Uh, the world is becoming more global and interconnected, and we in the Joomla world need to recognize and understand that. It's becoming more mobile as well. Of course, I'm here in Finland, the land of mobility. Uh, it's great to be here, and it, I was saying last night at dinner, we in the project need to find ways. When I say we in the project, I mean the entire community need to be thinking about ways we can take the technology and make it more social, more global, and more mobile. So look at what's happening with mobile web browsing these days. If you take a look at this chart, which is I think already a year or two old, it shows that mobile internet usage, at least by 2014, if not earlier, will be crossing and actually overcoming desktop web usage. So we need to think about that in the Joomla world because we're a very desktop, laptop-based system and tool and community. And we need to prepare and think about ways we can change for that. So let's embrace this change. Let's recognize that we're pretty well positioned to move forward with this. And let's also take a look today at the platform that we have that's going to help us leap beyond where we are today and into the future to help make sure we're reaching a more global, more mobile, and more social um, audience. So every generation has its challenges. Some generations are trying to put a, a man on the moon. In the Joomla world, this generation is trying to find ways that we can manage our community growth. We're growing, we're continuing to expand. Uh, I'll show you some numbers and some amazing, great looking charts that show where we're going as a community. But without one dictator or without one corporation telling us where to go, we're trying to do this in a more distributed model and it's gonna be interesting to see how we grow over time. So this is me and my sister at the University of California in Santa Barbara. Uh, what's amazing about this photo is that this school where she, this university that she went to, is about 500 feet from some of the most beautiful beach line in California. I just think that's wrong. I can't believe students get to live and go to school so close to the beach. Uh, and while she was enjoying her time there, I said, I have to, I have to come visit you, Jamie. I came there, and being a very geeky brother, I asked her questions like, so, so Jamie, when you're using the email, do you use your Santa Barbara email address? Are you using Gmail? What are you using for your email? Well, she said, uh, you know, I just use Facebook for mail. I said, okay, that's interesting. Well, what do you do with your friends when you wanna post photos from the party that you went to and share them with each other? You must put them on Picasso or on Flickr. No, we just use Facebook. What happens when you're with your sorority and trying to plan a party and you're getting groups of people together and having a discussion? We use Facebook. It just kept going on and on. It was Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. The next generation of users, the people that are at university right now or leaving university now are used to this cloud-based world, this very social 
world. And their jobs and the way in which they engage with the world is going to need to be in this very social, very open connections. What about businesses? I've had a chance to talk to many folks from Microsoft, lots of folks from eBay, other large corporations, and I asked them, what are you doing with technology? What are your needs? And they said, well, we've already got enough proprietary systems that are in silos that don't talk to each other. And when we need them to talk to each other, it's very expensive, it requires a lot of development, and all of it is one-off. Well, when they start to talk about the ways in which they can use Joomla, they see it a little differently. In fact, more uh, open source, rather than just Joomla, they're able to allow these tools to be the glue that connects together all of the different systems they have. So open source in Joomla allows companies like eBay to bring together different databases, different web services, and provide it in a unique position for their company. And what about the next generation of users? We've already seen my sister. She lives on Facebook. People here, I'm sure, use Twitter and other devices. We need to be thinking about ways in which we can make it easier for them to utilize these tools, and how can we do that in the Joomla community? So this isn't a challenge for me or leaders in the community. It's a challenge for us as a whole in this very distributed leadership model to find ways to move forward. We've got lots of questions, lots of challenges, and I want to start posing some potential answers today and throughout the day ask you guys for some ideas as well. So the question then is, how are we going to get there? And to help us lead into some answers to think about today, let me talk to you a little bit about some very scary economic things happening in the world of open source. So carrots and sticks, this, this concept that if you, you hang a carrot out in front of somebody, a prize, they're, they're going to keep chasing after it, and they'll keep working hard to uh, achieve whatever it is you want them to do, right? So there's, there's some research that has been done on motivation, on finding out what gets people motivated to take action. In fact, a small university called MIT hung out one day with a small banking institution called the Federal Reserve in the US, and they said, we should really try to figure out this motivation thing. What is it that's making people want to do something? And they all thought at first the hypothesis was, well, the bigger the pile of gold that they get for the reward, the better they'll do, the more work they'll do. Makes sense. So here's what they found. Of course, they did find that dangling the carrot does work, but it really works best for rudimentary, simple skills. So if, you know, if I'm paying somebody to take this penguin and just to move it down an assembly line, and I pay them more if they do it faster, yeah, that, that works. That, that seems to work decently well. But what's really strange is that when it starts to require critical thinking and something at a higher knowledge level, really weird things happen in that the larger the piles of gold, at some point, the results start to go down. So give them more money, give them more rewards, and then at some point you continue to give them more rewards and their work product goes down. That's really strange. What they found is that it's not just the money and the carrots that are the rewards, that are the motivating factors. They found and said these three things. First, autonomy. The ability for us to direct our own lives. That we have value and we have a desire to want to feel like we're in control of where we're going as people. Second, mastery, that we all have some innate urge to want to get better at something. Maybe it's playing the piano, maybe it's writing software code. I just realized that both of those are this sign. <laughs> uh, writing code, playing the piano. Uh, we want to get better at something, and we have this urge to, to do that. And then purpose that we want to feel like what we're doing adds up to something, that this crazy world that for somehow, some reason, our efforts are going to be part of something bigger that will contribute to the world and society. So just to get this straight, 
What we're doing in the open source world is we're taking extremely intelligent people that are very busy. This guy's working two computers, he's on a phone, he's drinking some sort of soda. He's crazy, he's doing lots of things at the same time, very busy. They're dedicating tons of time. They're busy people. They're freely giving of their time. And they're doing it for free. These are obviously insane, crazy people. They need to go to a hospital, right? Like, what is happening in the open source world that we've got people that are very smart, dedicating tons of time, already really busy, and doing it for free? That's really, really weird. <laughs> There's something wrong with us <laughs> as people. Um, this is a link to learn more about this study. It is very interesting. I'll post it on Twitter today. Uh, it goes through a nice 20 minute cartoon <laughs> of what the study found and what we can be learning from it in an open source society like Joomla. So here's my takeaway from this. I think what we're doing is trying to reach some higher purpose. Not, not a religious higher purpose, but just something bigger. And I would say that people are acting economically irrationally because they want to contribute to something bigger than themselves. And that's what we're doing in the Joomla community. All of us as users, showing up to this great Joomla Day event, writing code, contributing to the bug squad, and writing great software, all of us are contributing to something bigger than just ourselves. People know this guy, right? Anybody have a, an iPhone or I really had great kind of iPads, of course. Uh, when you worked for Steve Jobs, or when you go to Apple today to work, Steve Jobs didn't say, you know what, on your first day of work, you're here to make a better iPhone. That's why you're here. Instead, he said, you're working at Apple because we're going to make a dent in the universe. When you work for Sergey and friends at Google, you don't go there to make a better Gmail system or a better search engine. You're at Google to solve humanity's toughest problems. Big picture. Focusing on purpose, finding what that motivation is for software developers and non-software developers alike. Be purpose driven. Find out what that purpose is and that will help lead us forward. A short story to give you an understanding of what purpose means to me. Uh, this is the University of California at Los Angeles, UCLA. I did my undergrad and graduate work there. Um, after finishing undergrad, uh, I did what most American college students do, and that's go to Europe, the great unknown, <laughs> all the way across the Atlantic. I went to places like Nice and hopscotched my way uh, from country to country, just having a great time. And while I was in France, I got an email from my good friend, Gray, and Gray, instead of being the kind of person that decides after college to just go party for six weeks, he's the guy who's working in a war zone in Kosovo in Albania, helping refugees during the Balkans War in the late 1990s. And he says, Ryan, I know that you're doing things with technology and I have no idea what it really is, but if you can get to Albania, I wanna show you something. So I said, okay, well that sounds scary and interesting and being 21, I said, of course, I'll, I'll go to a war zone. That sounds <laughs> appealing. Uh, so I made my way to, uh, to Rome. I got on this uh, World Food Program plane uh, by the UN, made my way to Kosovo, made my way to Albania, and when I got there, we saw things like this, right? Refugee camps. And when we were there, we're learning things like there isn't a good logistics system to make sure that sweaters and heavy jackets were getting to people for winter rather than the beginning of summer. Or that medicine and food that was going bad 
because it was shipped in the wrong way, it was taking too long, and it wasn't helping out the people in need. So Gray said, Ryan, I know this open source technology stuff you're doing, and it has to somehow help these people. They, we obviously don't have a lot of money. The NGOs and the government relief agencies need assistance. What can we do to, to help? I said, well, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, I'm going back to Los Angeles, so I'm going to hop on a plane and make my way back to sunny Southern California, and I'll ponder it on a beach, maybe drinking a little mimosa in the morning, and maybe I'll think about open source and uh, nonprofit organizations. So about two months later, I saw this. The same plane that I was on, full of 24 people risking their lives to help others, crashed on its way, killing everybody. And here I am in Los Angeles, saying to myself, what, what can I do? And these people have given their lives to help others. I knew that I needed to do something more. I knew my purpose was not just going to be sipping mimosas on a beach in Los Angeles. So I took that and I focused on building my business, which is PicNet. My purpose was finding some way to help those less fortunate, those that are in uh, difficult situations, and to help them use technology, especially open source technology, to help make the world a slightly better place. Be purpose-driven. In an open source software community, we're not just consumers. We're not just people that sit around and watch football while drinking beer all day. We're more than that. We have very unique skills like juggling chainsaws and knives. There's very interesting folks here, I know. We're more than just users of this software. We're empowered contributors. We don't just use the software, we get to contribute and make it better. It's part of what we do, it's part of what we need to do, that the world community is hoping that we'll do a better job of making this happen. So we're going to change the world with Joomla and open source software. We're going to help end human trafficking. We're going to help make sure enterprise businesses get knocked out of silos and do better business and are more efficient. We're going to help governments around the world be more transparent and more open and better connected with their constituents. And we're going to do that with open source software. We're going to do that with Joomla. We'll do it with Drupal, as our friends from the Drupal community are doing. WordPress, everything. That's what we do in the open source world. So, three requests for you guys. First, find your motivation. I've already given you some ideas as to where you can look. Find what that motivation it is. And then second, because we're a room of entrepreneurs, bring that to your business. We have an opportunity to be more than just opportunist. We have an opportunity to find the motivation and to build businesses on top of that. And of course, bring that passion to Joomla. Because when we do that, with all the different skills we have, we're going to have a wonderful opportunity to make this a better project, and I think a better world. The software is great. I'll have wonderful charts to show you about huge user growth and tremendous downloads. Uh, that's terrific. But us, as contributors and users of the software, are what's really going to make it better. So what do we do to empower folks? What can we do to help make this a better community? So a very short history of Joomla so that you can kind of understand where we came from as a project. This all started off in Australia around 2000, 2001, with a software system called Mambo. Has anybody heard of Mambo before? Yeah, people are doing their homework, OK. Skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Don't need to tell you the homework. Boom, Joomla! 2005, right? Core development team says, we're going to become something different. We're going to be this distributed leadership model. We're a bunch of crazy contributors spending lots of time helping make this a better project. <coughs> the ride since then has been pretty interesting, folks. 
This is where I get to show fun graphs. <laughs> I love these charts. Our growth of users. These are the Joomla forum users from 2005 to 2011. Gotta love that up and to the right. All business people like seeing those kinds of charts, right? <laughs> Crossing over 500,000 registered users on the international forums. There's almost that same amount on the Spanish forums. And there's French forums. And there's Portuguese forums. And maybe there's, is there a Finnish, a separate Finnish site? I don't know. Is there? Yes. Well, that's not even calculating in these. <clears throat> 239 new users every day. 239 new crazy people, I love it. What about our posts, the discussions that we're having? Over or almost 2.5 million posts on our Joomla forums to date. That's 24 posts a minute. There's been a couple hundred posts since I first started talking. What about extensions? add-ons, things that make Joomla richer and better. Over 8,000 new add-ons and extensions in our extensions directory at Joomla.org. Not including anything that you guys might be making that you don't put on the directory or things that you're building internally in your own business or organizations. That's 149 new extensions every month. And what's amazing about this is that this extensions directory is kind of, sort of, not really somewhat similar to something like the iTunes uh, directory for apps for an iPhone. But at Apple, they pay a lot of people to manage that and to prune the postings and to make sure things are going well. These 149 new extensions and the things that are being managed on the extensions directory are being done by volunteers that are being paid zero dollars. They just want to contribute, they want to lend their hand to making this a better community. This is a, an interesting graph for developers of the platform code project. Uh, red means bad, red is going down, so that means good. The project, uh, the Joomla platform project is getting cleaner and the use of redundant code, code that is being reused over and over, is also going down. These aren't even the most recent snapshots. It's gone even lower than that in the past couple of weeks. This is a great listing of some of the top CMSs that are being used in the community. Uh, Joomla powers 2.7% of the top 1 million websites on the web today. That's awesome. That's great. But there's almost 75% of those top million websites are not even using a content management system yet. So oftentimes, people in our own Joomla community or in other open source or other technology worlds want to make this seem like it's a fight between Joomla, Pointer, Joomla, and Drupal, and maybe Typo3 and others. It's not a fight amongst us. It's an opportunity for us to collaborate together because 75% of the top million websites don't even know what a CMS is. Huge opportunity for our businesses and our communities to empower those folks to be able to use some of the latest, the best, and the easiest to use technology. So Joomla is this massive, massive ship. We're also small boats, small entrepreneurial uh, businesses that are helping in the community, they're leading by passion and leading by their motivation. So how do we do this? What are the kind of goals and, and the way we'll be moving forward? Uh, well, we need to start with mission and vision and values and make sure that we as a community collectively understand what those are. And beer. Beer often helps quite a bit. <laughs> When we were in Germany, we drank lots of beer, which helps in brainstorming and talking about these kinds of things. Joomla's mission is this. This is our mission as a community, folks, to provide a flexible platform for digital publishing and collaboration. That's what we're doing. We're, we want to make sure that we're helping people publish and collaborate. We want software that is free and secure and of high quality. 
and we want this community to be a fun place to work, or to contribute time, or to build businesses in. So our leadership path to getting there has been quite interesting as well. So there's two typical leadership models that we see in the open source communities. Uh, the first is the corporate-driven model. Think about this, maybe a company like Sun or other large corporations that say, we're building this software, and yeah, if you guys want to come and help us out and see the source code, come on in, you can do that. But really, it's the business that's leading it forward. Then there's the Lego version of Linus Trevolis, <laughs> of the Linux project. You can look at people like Dries from the Drupal project and others. These are people that started the projects themselves and then brought a community into it as they continued to develop it over time. But at the end of the day, there is always that person at the top. They say sometimes the benevolent uh, dictator. And then there's Joomla. These crazy hippies, socialists, I don't know what they are, just crazy people that our leadership model is more about finding ways to be more distributed and to kind of cycle through and to not have one company or one person telling us what to do, giving us some freedom maybe. Alan Gunn is one of our mentors in the Joomla project and I love this quote because he says that he wants to help Joomla because if we succeed as a community and as a project, we can uh, increase the hope for distributed leadership models across the open source world, which I think is pretty cool. What we've got in this community is really unique and really different, and it has to do with that Mambo beginning and what we've become since then. Our leadership has evolved from being just a core team to being an organization called Open Source Matters, which I'm the president of, that focused on the legal and financial aspects, and the core team that kind of did everything else. With the goal being, let's make this legal thing really weak, and let's make sure that our contributors and everybody else is very strong. We don't want to have a corporate-run project. We want this to be a volunteer-run project. Well, over time, <laughs> This idealism causes some people to hit the wall. And they think to themselves, don't I have a family? <laughs> don't I have friends? Didn't, didn't I have a job at one point before I started volunteering all my time to this wacky Joomla project? So things changed. And we realized that 27 people trying to run a project together might not be the most efficient way to move forward. And what changed was this. We built a model that looks like this now. That is a production team. This pointer doesn't work. A production team that's in charge of making sure the community is pointed in the right direction for the infrastructure of the code base. A community leadership team that's in charge of doing things like making sure the forums are working well, making sure that uh, a lot of the discussions that are happening in the community are well moderated. And then there's Open Source Matters, which is the nonprofit organization that's dealing, again, with the legal and the financial aspects. So essentially, we've broken those up, and we found ways to make that a little more efficient. I'm going to skip through some of this here, because I want to get to the cool stuff. Yeah, uh-huh, great. That's really important. OK. In case you've been living further north, where the snow covers all the land, you probably know that Joomla 1.6 was released in July. 1.6. 1.7. I should read my slides. Joomla 1.7 was released. Most importantly, it was released on time. That's crazy for open source projects. You always say it's going to be released here, and then two years down the road it gets released. We released it on time. It does some pretty cool things, such as one-click version upgrades in the past, going from Joomla 1.5 to 1.6. A bit of a tough problem. But now, you can click your way to upgrades in Joomla. Companies like Microsoft are helping in our Joomla community. I know people are saying, what is Microsoft doing here? This must be some crazy plot by Bill Gates to take over Joomla. I promise you, it's not. 
because Microsoft, as well as companies like eBay, have signed the Joomla Contributor Agreement. An agreement that says, if those companies contribute code to the project, they do that under the same terms that any of us would contribute code under the GPL license, free and open source. Microsoft is helping contribute code to an open source project like Joomla, and they're actually doing a pretty good job of it, as well as supporting us in a lot of other things. So is eBay and other corporations today. I'm gonna to skip through this. Yeah, uh -huh, that's great. 26.4 million downloads, that's ridiculously impressive. We're a big ship, we're not just small ships. We're big things, but what are we going to do with this huge ship? How are we going to lead this moving forward? Well, has anybody here heard of the framework or the Joomla platform? All right, great. We're going to be talking about this a little more today because I know that I'm running out of time. Essentially, the framework is like the operating system for Joomla. The CMS is the application that we know and love. And underneath it are a bunch of geeky, back office type framework stuff that we'll geek on later today. What I think we need to do in Joomla is we need to elevate this discussion. We get put on this spectrum a lot, right? People say, what's out there? There's WordPress, there's Joomla, there's Drupal. This gets all the kudos for being really easy to use, super user friendly. Our Drupal friends, sorry camera. Our Drupal friends over here get kudos and props for being great developer tools. So developers can just take the hammer and the nails and the lumber and build whatever they want. And Joomla always seems to be in the middle of that spectrum. Well, I'm challenging our community this year, from Joomla days and all the events I go to, to say, what if there's a way that we can take this unique framework we have and elevate us off this spectrum of content management systems and content publishing and think about something different, something that we've had for three and a half years but we haven't really focused on. So developers, wake up. More coffee for developers because there are things like GitHub, which is where developers are sharing code in a very social and friendly way, where you can contribute to making this platform better. Uh, in fact, there's 103 forks of the Joomla platform. That's a 14% increase in just the last two weeks. Oh my god, I said forks. There's 100 plus forks of Joomla. That's a bad word, right? The world is ending. There's 100 forks of Joomla. The community is ruined. Not exactly. Forks are what we use in today's Joomla world to continue to innovate. We take the stable code, we say, you know what, we want, we want to use that. We want to we'll take part of this and innovate with it. So we fork it. And with GitHub, it's really easy to do this. Louis Landry, uh, one of the architects of the Joomla platform, wrote this, I haven't had this much fun contributing to Joomla since Joomla first started because it's easy for developers to get involved today. It was much harder before, much easier today. In Chicago, Joomla Day, we built three platform apps. In Cape Town, we built an app. In Brazil, we built an app. In Joomla Day, Austin, we drank lots of really good <laughs> beer. In the UK, they built two apps. In New York, they built an app. In Denmark, they found more beer and they kept drinking. <laughs> what are we going to do here in Finland? What are the ideas that we can generate? What is this platform thing? What if I told you that you can actually use Joomla from a command line interface? Scary, I know. Green text, that doesn't sound fun at all. But what if we can start doing things like pulling and publishing tweets from Twitter from a command line interface and publishing them to Joomla or to Drupal? or to WordPress, or to anything? What if we want to build ticketing systems? What if we want to build a replacement for Nagios, a monitoring service? We don't need a CMS to do that. We need other services. And this can run on this platform that's been kind of hiding behind the curtain, and nobody's really been using it. But it's changing now, and we're doing more with it. Why is this important to me? What do I have, five minutes left, I think? Sure, okay. Great. Uh, why is this important to me? Because of lines like this. 
These are people lining up trying to find work in the United States. The lines are longer in Italy and Greece and Spain and our other friends in the European Union, right? I don't want to see anybody in our Joomla community in these lines. I want our developers to have the best tools they can, not just to write extensions for Joomla, but to build new applications that allow us to create software that's more social, more global, and more mobile. And you don't need a content management system to do that. You need a great and easy to use framework. And if we have 250,000 registered developers in our Joomla community, and if we could tell them, here are the same great tools that you've been using to build forums and commenting components and shopping carts for Joomla, well, with that same knowledge, you can build anything you want in a web app. It doesn't have to have anything to do with the CMS. And that's what's going on right now in Joomla leadership and the Joomla community around the world today to be thinking about where we're going as a community beyond just the content management system. And I know I'm running out of time, um, so I'm going to skip through a couple of things here. One of the big changes that we've seen to help make this happen is that the Joomla release cycle has changed. It used to be that we would release every three years or so. We're now releasing new versions of Joomla every six months. Now I know that's a little scary because you're thinking, oh my goodness, this will take forever to upgrade and I have to do it every six months now. That sounds even scarier. The reality is with the one-click upgrades in the CMS, it's very easy to do this, to upgrade every six months, not so difficult. In fact, you really only need to upgrade every 18 months, but come talk to me afterwards and I can tell you why that is. So with this, we can accommodate the large ships and the small boats and we can have very energized developers. Okay, so who's going to do this? At the end of the day, it's you, it's not me. I'm not going to come from the mountaintop and say, here is Joomla 2.5, go forth and make websites. We as a community are the ones in charge now. We're the ones that the leadership team has said, we're not writing code anymore. We're gonna lay the path, we're gonna present the vision, we're gonna build a roadmap with you, but the people writing the code are us. Contributing ideas is us. Designing the next interface is us. It's not some person who's just going to do it for us. It's change. This is a huge change in our Joomla community. Uh, I know that Mika and folks are saying, you're running out of time, Ryan. So I'm going to move through, I'm running out of time, right? Yeah, just be a little bit more. You're flexible, you so far. Perfect, great. Well, then I'm going to go back a couple slides then. Very briefly. <laughs> Very briefly, I swear. This is okay. I'm hacking the system. You're going to steal time from other guys. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't look. This is going to be ugly. Uh, how do you get involved? This used to be hard. You didn't know where to go. You had to be some crazy developer with tons of time. Step number one. Pretty much everybody here knows how to use a mouse and how to click a button, right? If you can do that, you can contribute to Joomla because at ideas.joomla.org, you can vote on ideas that other members of the community think should be included in Joomla. And you know what? If you can also use a keyboard, you can write your ideas at ideas.joomla.org and include what features would you like to see in future versions of Joomla. Okay, that's pretty easy. Clicking a button, typing on the keyboard, we can do this. What about bugs? If you see bugs, you've got a problem with Joomla and you're, you're upset and it's not working for you, share that with the world. Let us know, because we're working on it together. Somebody else in this room might know the fix to the problem that you're facing. You can do this on the bug tracker. If you're a developer and you want to revolutionize the system, do you want to be very innovative, it used to be very difficult. In the last six months, it's as easy as clicking this button that says fork. And if you can click a button, you can innovate and help us in Joomla. 103 forks. More than that, developers working to make the platform better. It's really, really easy to do this now. You don't have to ask permission. You actually used to have to ask for permission to do this. Now you click a button 
in the middle of the night without telling anybody. And you can do this. So non-developers, we need help in the forums. If there's marketers, I know there's lots of business people here, we would love to learn how to make some more money to help out events like this and to help make sure that more people get to spread the word of what we're doing in the Joomla community. So my last thought for you is this. Isn't this stuff really difficult? Though I must be hiding something, right? I mean, this sounds crazy. Well, I just started off as some dude helping out in a sub-forum of a forum to talk about nonprofits and how they can use Joomla. And then I got suckered <laughs> into meeting up with these guys in a hotel room in New York to be on the board of Open Source Matters because I had some nonprofit skills. And then they said, well, maybe you can help out by putting on some of the first Joomla Day events uh, in the United States. So I did that out west. We did this out east in, in New York. Uh, did a couple of other things, just kept getting more involved. None of it had anything to do with development at all. I wrote zero code on my way. Uh, and then they made me Ryan with Obama's body, I guess. <laughs> uh, which is where I am today. But it didn't require any code. It didn't require asking permission. It just required me to spend the time to make that happen. And what we need to be thinking about as a community is how can we help in managing this huge and growing community. This is my motivation. I don't work within the Joomla project because I'm a geek that wants to write code and really build some innovative software. I'm doing it because 24 other people can't help people in need around the world. And I feel as though my passion and my personal mission is to find ways that we can use open source software like Joomla to help people that could really use it. Thank you, Joomla Day Finland. Find your mission, find your passion, and bring it to the Joomla project. Thank you.